And joining me now is the Democratic Senator from Colorado, Michael Bennett. Uh, Senator, thank you so much for joining us. I want to get your reaction to the recent events in the Middle East that we've been talking about. How concerned are you that the death of the Hamas leader not only escalates tensions in the region, but also effectively puts an end to those ceasefire negotiations? I'm, I'm deeply concerned about it. I think we all should be deeply concerned about it. There's a moment at which the escalations begin to feel like what is now just possible, which is a wider war in the Middle East, could become inevitable. And we, we have to try not to allow that to happen. I think the Biden administration is, uh, is obviously deeply involved in peace negotiations here. And I think they have to continue to try to push, uh, even when the domestic politics of the opposing parties in the Middle East seem to be, at the moment at least, perpetually pushing uh, uh, them apart. In the end, the, I think the only hope here is for two states that are living side by side. We're a long way from that happening, obviously, but I think that the United States has a role to play here to try to keep this from becoming an even greater regional conflagration. And I'm glad the Biden folks are trying to do that. Senator, just last week you met with some American hostage families. What do you tell them now? Well, I, what they said to me was that they were desperate for their uh, the hostages to come home, that they wanted to have uh, a settlement that would allow the hostages to come home. I think that's still true today. We need to be pushing for that. And, Senator, if Democrats win the White House in November, what's your sense of Vice President Harris's foreign policy chops? We were just talking about that in the previous segment. What, what do you make of her foreign policy resume, in essence? I think, look, uh, we were members together on the Intelligence Committee here in the Senate. I think she's got good foreign policy chops, and I think the Biden administration has a record of leadership uh, especially with respect to the mobilization of uh, the European nations and nations all around the world in the fight against Putin that Ukraine has led. You know, Ukraine's fight is not just a fight for Ukraine, it's a fight for democracy. Joe Biden has been a huge part of that, and I think Kamala Harris would step right into those shoes as opposed to the recklessness of Donald Trump when he was president, and the downright insanity of J.D. Vance when it comes to his isolationist positions. You know, Kamala Harris will be picking up a much more conventional and, I'd say, normal approach to our foreign policy than the one that Trump and, and Vance would be espousing. And, Senator, I want to turn now to talk a little bit more about domestic politics. You, you were one of the first Democrats to express concern about keeping President Biden on the ticket. Are you surprised at the level of enthusiasm you've seen so far for the VP? Is, is I, it sustainable? I think, well, I think it's incredible, uh, and I think it's wonderful, and I think jo Joe Biden's decision that he made is an incredibly patriotic one that put the country ahead of Joe Biden. Now our job is to make sure the next four months count. The question you ask about whether it's sustainable is whether we're going to show up every single day between now and Election Day and make sure we elect a Democratic ticket in the White House, the Senate, and the House. I believe now that the change has been made, we have the chance to do it. But it's not going to happen by itself. There's nothing about it that's self-executing. We're going to have to go knock on doors and get people out and make sure they understand the stakes. When, when you see a former president of the United States do what this president did in Chicago, if people didn't have a reason to work to make sure that we win this election and to fight to make sure that, that you win this election, you now understand what the consequences really are. And, Senator, you and we got to go get the work done. Senator, you mentioned the impact on some down-ballot races. Specifically, what races do you think Vice President Harris will help Democrats? I think she already has. You know, my big, my, the concern I articulated uh, early on about uh, President Biden's uh, continued presence on the ticket was that I thought we could get wiped out in the House and the Senate. Even today, I would say, our odds of, uh, of winning the House are vastly improved from where they were before uh, the vice president 
took up the mantle, and I think our odds in the Senate today are, are much higher than they were before. And part of that is the generational difference that the vice president represents, and a huge part of it, I think, is the ex excitement about young people all over Colorado, all over this country, who feel like they now have a reason to go vote. I think they had a reason to vote before, but that's not as important. Now they feel like they have a reason to vote, and we got to make sure everybody does vote. And, Senator, the campaign says that she'll be out in battleground states with her VP pick next week. You, you told NBC last week you love Mark Kelly. So do you think, still think that he's the best choice among the remaining contenders? Well, I still love Mark Kelly. I don't think I said he was the best choice, but I said I love Mark Kelly, and I think that she is going to make an excellent choice. Uh, she doesn't need me to interfere with that decision. Um, with regards to Mark Kelly, the Trump campaign has gone all in attacking her record on the border. Just yesterday in that rally in Atlanta, uh, the vice president came out very aggressively trying to counter that na narrative. Would Mark Kelly mitigate that? Oh, I think he could help a lot on that issue. He understands the border. You know, he's from, uh, he's from obviously, from Arizona. He's from a border state. But listen, the, the reality is the Republicans walked away from this, this immigration bill because Donald Trump wanted to keep it as a campaign issue. That's no secret to everybody. What is less well understood is that's not the first time. I was part of the Gang of Eight. It's now 10 years ago, four Republicans and four Democrats who wrote the last comprehensive immigration bill that passed the Senate with 68 votes. And who killed it? The Freedom Caucus in the House killed it because they don't actually want to solve the issue. They just want to campaign on the issue, was it, whether it was eight years ago, 10 years ago, or when we were negotiating, you know, over Ukraine aid. And the reality is the country needs to deal with this, and we need to deal with it the way we did it in the Gang of Eight bill, securing the border, a pathway to citizenship for the 11 million people, the DREAM Act and the visa bills that are so important to our agriculture sector, you know, and I think that that we can do it. You know, this Senator, is something that with the right leadership in Washington, we can do. Senator, we'll have to leave it there. Senator Michael Bennett of Colorado, Thanks thank you so much for your time. And